All right, so in this video, we're going to talk about uh, the path constraint. Uh, for this example, I just simply have a drawn out spline in my scene, and I have a box with a spline that's acting as the parent for that box. So uh, what we're doing essentially is we're changing the animation controller or like the controller type essentially. So I need to assign a different controller. Uh, the controller that I need to assign is called a path constraint. By default the position uh, controller sorry is position XYZ. So if at any point you're using a path constraint and then you let's say you change your mind for whatever reason you can simply change it back to position XYZ and your gizmo would interact the exact same way it would by default right so we're gonna go ahead again I've got my spline selected the spline is gonna act as my position controller so that's what's going to have the path constraint applied to it I'm gonna go into my motion tab and then we're looking for assign controller so what we're doing is we're changing the position controller here so I have that selected and I now have the option here to click on this small little button that says assign controller. So when I click on that inside this assign position controller window there's a series of different options. I'm looking for path constraint. So I have path constraint here. I then have an option to add a path. So I'm going to go ahead and click on add path and this is where you're then going to select your spline. So you can see I now have my spline selected. Uh, if you take a look there's this option here for percent along path. Percent along path is what's going to control the position movement of your object along that path that you have selected, right along that spline. Now this is automatically also animated. If you can see on my timeline, I have a keyframe on zero and I have one on 1200. So based on whatever your active time segment is, it will create those keyframes automatically. Right? You may or may not want to keep those frames. Now we have different options here with the path parameters. Again, you can see as my object plays here, or if I press play as my object moves, uh, it's not exactly necessarily like following the spline. You might be working on, again, something like a spaceship type of movement or a spaceship type of uh, animation or a car, whatever it might be. You might want to have this object actually oriented and directed in a correct way. So we have different options off here. Again, we've got uh, follow. If I go ahead and simply click on follow, you can see what's happened to my object here. Uh, it's now actually following that spline a little bit more. Um, now as it's following it, it may or may not be moving in the direction or kind of rotating in the direction that you desire. You can always go into uh, frame zero here, just have auto key turned off. I'm going to change my gizmo to local and I'm just going to go ahead and rotate this about 90 degrees. Right, so now that I rotate it, you can see it's kind of flowing in the way that I actually want. Now again, there's other options here too, such as bank. This is really nice if you are doing like a spaceship based animation. I'm just going to go ahead and speed up my animation here for a second and we'll press play. Uh, you can see if I have bank turned on, the object is actually going to bank, right? It's going to kind of move like so. Now you can see it actually kind of flipped over there. So there are things that we have to kind of consider when we are using the bank. Um, there's things like bank amount and smoothness. If you come in here and you alter with these options, uh, they will change the actual result of the bank. Um, you could also come in and make changes to your actual spline, right? If I come in and grab my path here, as I make changes to my path, that will also alter the banking of my object, right? So you kind of have to go in between uh, or back and forth between a number of different things. Um, again, sometimes you want bank, sometimes you don't. If you're doing a car animation, typically you're not going to use bank. If you're doing any sort of like flight based animation, uh, airplanes will bank, right? They naturally do that type of movement. So we typically want to use that type of feature.